This problem is a straightforward extension to the original problem permutations. I am talking about the problem permutations 2 on lead code. You are given an array of integers and you have to find out all the possible arrangements or permutations that you can make from this array. The only difference is that this time this array could have duplicates as well. If you have not seen the original video to the problem permutations, I would highly recommend you to stop this video right over here and watch that video first. You can find the link in the description below. In this video, I will primarily focus on the difference this problem has from the original problem. So we will try to solve for that. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, a place where we explore the life of technology and make programming fun and easy to learn. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will see what is the difference in these two problems and why do you get those duplicates? What is the issue over there? We will solve for it and then we will also do a dry run of the code so that all of this sticks in your mind forever. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. You are given an array of integers that might contain duplicates. Duplicate over here is a very important term because that is what it is different from the original problem permutations, right? Now, when you're given this array, you have to return all the possible permutations or the different arrangements, right? So let us look at some sample test cases. For our first sample test case, we have an array that does not have any duplicates. So theoretically, the answer to this test case should be exactly the same, right? You should have n factorial that is equal to six different permutations, correct? So when you look at your answers, you find all the six permutations and this is your answer for first test case, correct? Now, what happens when one of the element is duplicated? In test case number two, you can see that the element one is duplicated, right? So this means that some of the permutations will also be duplicated. So when you look at the unique permutations this array can produce, they will only be three. You cannot have any other arrangement that is different from these three arrangements. So in a case of duplicates, these three arrays should be your answer. Now, if you have understood the problem statement correctly and want to try it out on your own once again, feel free. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and first of all, try to figure out where are all these duplicates actually coming from. To understand the source of duplicates, let us take up a generic example. And rather than integers, I'm taking example of characters because understanding things with characters is pretty easy, right? So I have this generic string with me and this string has a repeated character. The character L, right? So that things are easier to see, I have highlighted the duplicate character in a different color, right? And now what we're going to do is we will try to create the state space tree and see why we are getting those duplicates. So if you approach this problem in the same way, what will happen? You are going to select one of the characters, right? Let us say you selected L and then you will get L in your string and then you can choose from either I or the second L or y, correct? Similarly, you could choose the letter i or you could even choose the second letter l, correct? And then you would backtrack once again and you could choose the letter y, right? Currently, let us just focus on these two scenarios. When I'm choosing the first letter l and when I'm choosing the duplicate letter l. What will happen when I'm choosing the duplicate? I will once again get l in my string and to choose the elements, I will have a choice of the first l or i or y, correct? Now, what happens when I try to backtrack on the first occurrence of L? I can either choose an I, or I can choose the second occurrence of L, or I can choose a Y, right? And similarly, what happens when I do backtrack on the second occurrence? I can either choose the first occurrence of L, or I, or Y, correct? So this will create new strings now, right? Now, just try to look at these strings. We have L i over here, we have double L over here and we have a L y over here, right? And all of these will backtrack again to create more permutations, correct? And now also try to look at these three strings over here. You again have a double L, you have a L i and you have a L y, right? Now try to think, all of these will backtrack and all of these will backtrack. So you know that when the first two characters are same, 
all the permutations that these strings are going to produce they will all be the same right so they will all be duplicates correct so technically all of these cases will just be duplicates of what we are getting over here right sure there will be some more duplicates over here and here but this is the crux of the problem you have to find a solution such that these duplicates are not encountered so now when you think about the original solution that we had for the problem permutations what was the issue with that on the left side of your screen you have the original solution to the problem permutations right and on the right i have a sample array that does not have any duplicates 1 2 and 3 so i just want to focus on the for loop that we had what was the approach that we took we took a element and then we backtrack and then we remove the element to replace it with a second element right so we add a new element we backtrack and then we remove the element to replace it with a second element correct so how does your backtracking look after one iteration you will start getting your temporary list right you start to form your temporary list over here and then you have a choice to choose either from two or three either from one or three and then either from one or two right and all of these cases will extend to form your permutations correct now when all of these cases will further backtrack how were we making sure that we are not including the number that we have already included we added a if condition right that if our list already contains the number that we are choosing just skip it and continue but this approach fails in a case when you have duplicates for example in this array the element 2 is duplicated right so when you apply your backtracking approach you will get your temporary lists right now if you try to backtrack on any of these cases what will happen when you encounter this if condition you will never consider the case of these two right because they already exist in your temporary list right so the answer that you will get will not be correct because you are going to skip some of the cases so we need to address this problem somehow we need to find a way so that we can be sure that okay this too has been used but this too has not been used so we need to store that information somewhere right let us say i have this word again with me and that is lily so i want to make sure or i want to find out that i am using the correct l and not the other one right i need to find a way or i need to store somewhere which of the else that i have used so one way to approach this is i will create a boolean array now this array will just store which of the elements that i have used so currently let's say i have not used any of the characters right so all of these flags are set to zero so now whenever you are creating your state space tree just look up in this array this array will exactly tell you if an element has already been used or not for example let us say i am picking up my first l so i am picking up my first l and what i am going to do is i will change this flag to 1 and this will now tell me that okay the first l is in use but the second l has not been used and when you are backtracking so what will you do you will backtrack and then you are going to remove this l right as soon as you remove this just change back the flag to zero because this time we will be picking up a different l right so this boolean array of used flags is one way how you can keep track of which of the elements you are using and which one you are not right however there is one more thing that you should take care of let's say i have the same string with me lily and this has duplicate characters right so when you will be creating your state space tree then you will still get duplicates and that duplicate will be because let us say i pick the first l and then i and i will get the second letter l and then y again right what is going to happen is in all of these permutations you will get one more example you will get the second occurrence of l first and then you will get the first occurrence of l now programmatically both of these are different right because both the l's have been derived from different places but these both words are same right and hence when you are writing code you need to address these duplicates as well so now that you have covered all the cases how can you tweak your code to handle both of these cases let us take up a sample array so i have this array in front of me and you can see that this array has duplicates right this array is now passed in as a input parameter to the function permute unique correct 
So what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we will create a revert list that will have all the permutations. We will apply backtracking on this and then ultimately re return this revert list as your answer. Correct? Oh, and by the way, this complete code and the test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. There is one more thing to however note. So what if your array was one of these? You can see that all the elements are same, right? Only their position is different. So if the position is different, that will not change all of your permutations, right? So before backtracking, it is a good idea to sort all of these numbers, right? Notice that in our backtracking method, we also pass in an empty array. And this is our flags array that will contain if an element has been used or not. So right now it is telling me that all of my elements are unused, correct? Now let us look how the backtrack method actually looks like. Notice that this backtracking method is very much similar to the original problem, right? What we're gonna do is we are gonna address our concerns and make changes accordingly. Our first concern was that we have to determine a way if an element has been used or not. And that is why this used flags boolean array comes in handy. What we're gonna do is we are gonna add some of these conditions. What happens is if an element is already used, just skip it, right? And remember the way we were backtracking? When we added an element, we marked the flag as true. So what will happen is this flag will be marked as one, correct? That means we have used the first element. And once we backtrack, what we're gonna do is we will mark this element as unused again and then remove this from our temporary list, right? So that is how this loop will go on and it will create all of your permutations. What about the second concern? That your words could be duplicated, right? So what we're gonna do is we will add one more condition to our original if loop. That is our base case. You only need to add your permutations to your final revert list if it is originally not contained in your revert list. If it is contained in your revert list, just skip it. We do not want duplicates over there, right? So once this loop executes, you will get all your permutations. The time complexity of this solution will remain the same as the original solution. Only your space complexity will change a little bit because you are using an additional array to store all of your flags. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see problems like this, where a new problem is derived from an original problem, just focus on the deviation and try to solve for those special cases that are originating due to that difference. This way you will save time and you will even speed up your coding practices. Even if you're giving interviews, your interviewer will be happy to know that, okay, you saved time and you are being efficient with your solutions. Did you find any other problems where you see that, okay, this is derived from another one? Or can you think of more extensions to this original problem permutations too? How do you solve for all of them? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text explanation to this problem is also available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. You can find the link in the description below. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problems do you want me to solve next or rather what do you want to learn next. Until then, See ya.